In this tutorial, we are going to go over how to put some 2D primitive shapes into P5JS. So before getting into drawing some 2D primitive shapes, we have to first learn about a concept called the Cartesian coordinate system. So if you look on the screen here, there is a horizontal X axis and there's a vertical Y axis. And at the center of the intersection between X and Y, um, there is a purple dot. <laughs> and that purple dot in this graph represents 0, 0, which is the center of that graph. Um, so, so when you see that syntax, you know, with, with a parenthesis 0, um, comma 0, what that is saying is that the X value is 0 and the Y value is 0. Let's actually jump over to the P5JS reference website. So it's P oh so it's p5js.org forward slash reference. And what you want to look over here is under shapes. And you can see that oh there's a whole list of different kinds of 2D primitives that we can play with. Um, as a starting point, let's first play with a rectangle. So, so I'm going to look into the reference here for rect, which stands for a rectangle. And I can see that, oh, OK, so, so this is the syntax for rectangle. It takes four different values. What are those values? If you keep scrolling down, um, you would find a description of the syntax. Each of these values um, in programming terms are called the parameters. Um, you can also just call them values. <laughs> and, and so um, there is, you can see that it takes four value. The first value is x, the second value is y, the third value is width, and the fourth value is height. And there are some other stuff behind it um, that is essentially optional. When you see, when you see parameters sort of put into the square bracket, it means that that's optional parameters. Okay. So I'm going to come back here with that limited amount of information I have and type, create a rectangle into my draw function. So here I'm going to say rect and I'm going to, um, let's say I'm going to do 0, 0, 100, 100. And I'm going to hit play. And voila. So there's, there's my rectangle right there. Um, it is aligned perfectly to the top and left of my canvas. Why is that? So here I've created an overlay to make it super clear for you. Um, in P5, in the Cartesian coordinate system, the zero for both X and Y actually starts from the upper left of the canvas. So I'm going to keep going ahead and um, draw something else. And, and so the next thing I'm going to draw is actually an ellipse. So a ellipse also takes four different values. And if I come down and look at it, it's also x, y, width, and height. OK, so I'm going to come back here and type ellipse. Um, here I'm going to make it, um, I'll just put in the same value. So 0, 0, 100, 100. So what I am imagining right now is that maybe when I hit play, the circle will overlap onto the rectangle perfectly. Ooh, and it's not. Uh, something weird is happening right here. And huh, that's interesting. Um, the reason for why this is happening, I think, is because in P5, a rectangle and an ellipse has different anchor points. Um, meaning um, when you draw a square, the alignment for that square is at its upper left corner. And when you draw an ellipse, the alignment anchor point is at its center. So if I want to align the ellipse um, with the rectangle, maybe I can push it 
you know, halfway to the right and halfway to the bottom. So, so now you see that inside of 2D primitives, there's actually, um, you know, differences in terms of anchor point. Okay, and something else is interesting that's happening here is that uh, our ellipse is drawn on top of our rectangle. How does it know to do that um, and not the other way around? So, so actually in P5, there is something called the drawing order. So whatever shape that you code, you know, last <laughs> is going to appear later. So let's do a quick test. If we put our ellipse above our rectangle and hit play, now it's completely behind it and we cannot see it. Okay, so um, I'm going to actually, um, with those knowledge, take this part away. And I want to maybe create something, an image that's a little more advanced than just a plain square and a plain circle. So what I'm going to make is a smiley face. Um, so let's think. If I want a smiley face and they can only be made out of 2D primitive shapes, I need um, a circle for the face. <laughs> that's the starting point. So I'm actually going to write some notes for myself. Um, face and I'm going to do ellipse and I'm going to say um, the position of this face should be in the center of the canvas. So 200, 200 and maybe the face size can be 100, 100. Great. <laughs> and so um, the next thing we can do and I can let's actually also put the parameters in here so that it's really clear for us. And the next thing I want to do is adding some eyes. So I imagine that I actually need uh, need to draw more ellipse, but tinier ones, right? So I'm going to say ellipse, um, and it's probably going to be 180, 150, and 20, 20. Oh, <laughs> the eyes is too tall. Uh, so let's do 170 maybe. Oh, that's still too tall. So at the start of, you know, your programming journey, um, there's a lot of guessing games, <laughs> just as what I'm doing right now. Um, and as we go on in the future, it's going to get easier because we'll, we'll learn more ways to, to make this process a little more automated. Okay, so I'm going to, I think that's a pretty good left eye position for me right there. I'm going to mirror that to the other side. So if the center of my face is 200, 200, um, the X value for my right eye should be 220. And the height, which is the Y value here, should be the same as my left eyes. So next thing I want to show is adding a nose to the face. And for that, I'm going to use a triangle. So you can see triangle has way more parameters. What is going on here? Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six parameters. And when I look at the syntax, it says x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Essentially, for every single one of these points um, on the triangle, there is an X value and a Y value, correct? So, so if you plug in all three different values, what this triangle syntax does is that it connects the dot for you. So what I'm going to do is actually take this triangle over and I'm going to make a note that this is the nose <laughs> and I'm going to hit play and see what happens. So obviously the position is off. That's not where it's supposed to be. So let's start kind of um, try to think about what the first point of my nose should be. Um, I'm going to say that the first point is going to be 200 because the nose is going to start from the center of the face. And the white point is going to be slightly lower than the eyes. So something like two, 200 maybe, let's see. And um, the second point of that um, meaning like maybe like this side of my nose is going to be, um, let's say 180 and Y is maybe 220 and the other side is 220, 
220. So let's just see. <laughs> okay, that's a very um, nice nose over there. Um, great, I'm going to actually make it just slightly higher so that it gets a little closer to my eyes. So I think the first point, the va value for the first Y point, because it's a vertical axis, right? Needs to be more like 190 maybe. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, so um, the next thing I want to show is actually adding a mouth. So this is probably the most tricky part because I, I guess I can make a ellipse mouth, like the mouth can be a circle, like as if it's a kind of surprise, but I kind of want a smiley face mouth. <laughs> so, so what I need right here is something called an arc. So once I get into arc and look at the syntax here, there is um, some missing information here. Let's see. So, so an arc start from an X position, a Y position, a width of the arc, and a height of the arc. That's all good. That's all familiar territory so far. But what is start and what is stop? So let's look at start and stop over here. The explanation for start is number angle to start the arc specified in radians. And stop, <laughs> angle to stop the arc, specified in radians. Um, so, so this actually calls for some explanation. <laughs> um, so, so when P5 says radians, it's expecting you to enter either 2 pi or pi or a half pi or pi plus half pi, um, so on and so forth. We'll actually talk more about pi uh, in, in a later episode, um, but let's first focus on making a smiley face. Um, and I also included the, uh, the outer ring that you can see, and those numbers are in degrees. So, so 2 pi essentially represents 0 degree, and 90 represent half pi, and pi is 180 degrees. So with this information, we can actually go back, back and like plug in the value for our arc. Um, so let's come back here and I'm actually going to just um, borrow the syntax over here and I'm going to say this is the mouth. Okay, so if I hit play here, we're gonna see a random arc kind of just like drawn um, in the middle of the canvas. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give the arc a position and that is going to be 200 um, right in the center. And the Y value is going to be, I think it's going to be something like 220 because it's going to be like below the triangle. So maybe more like 320. And the width value is going to be smaller, I guess, than, than what we're seeing now. I'm just going to write 3030. 30. We can always tweak it once we get there. And um, I'm going to hit play first and just make sure everything's okay. It's, it's not perfect. It's actually kind of a snarky smile, which I kind of like. Um, but okay, we, we're going to keep going and tweak the starting parameter and the ending parameter over here. So, so what we want to do is returning to this chart and see that, okay, in order for us to create a full sort of like half circle smile, we need to start at zero and end at pi. So let's come back here and plug those values in. So over here, the first starting value, I have it at zero. And what I need to do is just to make the second stopping value pi for it to go full circle. Um, I can also alternatively plug in 2 pi instead of 0. And that is going to yield the same result. Um, and you know, you can always tweak the face. And for me, I think I want the height of the face to be a little 
shorter and um, maybe the width of the smile to be a little shorter too. Okay, so this is how you create 2D primitive shapes in P5.js. In the next tutorial, we're gonna get into coloring.